All right guys, so I've had my XDAR DP2710 monitor for a little over a month now, and I figured I would share my experiences with it so far. So first, let's talk about the things that I liked about this monitor. And first on that list would definitely be the price. This monitor comes in at about $300 to $350 depending on where you buy it. And for a 1440p monitor, that is actually a really great price. If you buy a similar monitor from a company like Asus or Samsung, you're probably going to pay $600 to $900 just depending on the quality of the panel you get. So this monitor being $350 definitely opens it up to a lot more people like myself. The first thing that I actually noticed when I used this monitor was how accurate the colors are on it. White actually looks white and black actually looks black. Now on the Asus monitor I have over here, colors are pretty close but the whites are a little bit tannish and that kind of takes away from the media viewing experience as well as making it a little bit more difficult to edit an accurate looking video. So I definitely enjoyed that about this new monitor. So the next two features of this monitor are actually pretty closely related and they both pertain to gaming. So first up, you are able to overclock the panel of this monitor. So it comes running at 60 Hz, but with a simple utility you can program that to run at pretty much any speed you want. Um, obviously it's going to depend on the limitation of the monitor that you get and that's pretty much just luck of the draw. You can buy some on eBay that are rated to run at a certain speed faster, but for the most part you might as well just buy one and try it for yourself. Some people are actually getting panels that can run as fast as 120 hertz, and from what I've seen, 90 hertz is a very common overclock, which is honestly very fast, and at that point you might actually be outpacing your graphics card. And the other part of that is the incredibly low input lag of this monitor. Now I haven't tested that, so this is actually just an assumption, but I can't really think of a reason why it wouldn't be true. So this monitor has one input, and one input only, so there's no conversion chips inside like there is in this monitor. So the picture comes straight through the cable, straight through the basic circuitry in there, and straight onto the panel. So that does actually give it a lower input lag, and I know a few people have tested this, and it's true. So this monitor is not going to have as low of an input lag as, say, a gaming monitor would, but it's not going to be too much of a noticeable difference, and it shouldn't really matter very much. And one more thing to mention is that I still haven't seen a single dead pixel across this entire monitor. Now I have checked it very recently and none seem to have appeared and I did actually put my face very close to the monitor so I definitely would have been able to see if there was a dead pixel and there were absolutely none. So that's another positive that no real flaws have appeared yet and I don't think they will honestly. And by far the most important feature of this monitor and actually the one that I noticed first is just all the extra screen real estate you get from having all the extra pixels. So I loaded up a quick demo that I wanted to show you guys here. And basically all this is is the Vegas file for one of my weekly recaps. Now on the left here you can see it on the XDAR monitor. And everything is pretty clearly visible. You can see the media bin over here. And here's a nice large preview window that's plenty big enough to see from a regular sitting distance. And here's all your timelines. So you can see that there's a couple tracks that are off the screen but for the most part they all fit. And actually the only thing that's currently off the screen is the audio track, which I really didn't have to edit anyways. So everything's pretty clearly visible on that timeline. Now if we look at a regular 1080p monitor, then we can see that the preview window, although the same pixel resolution, takes up a much larger portion of the screen. I have almost no room for my media bin over here, and everything is just squished together. The timeline down here involves a lot of scrolling because you can only see a couple lines at once. Now, of course, I could resize a bunch of this, but then my preview window gets so small that it's almost impossible to see. And you just basically have to make a bunch of trade-offs if you can only use one 1080p monitor while editing this many tracks. So now, what I said I was going to use this like was I'm going to use this monitor to do my editing and this one to do my preview on. But I actually ended up just using this preview window right here on the 1440p monitor and just leaving this monitor doing nothing, basically because just this screen real estate alone was more than enough for me. So I'll probably end up adapting to use that other monitor, but for now, this is plenty more than enough real estate because it's more than I've ever had before. So after speaking so highly of this monitor, it is unfortunate that I do have to mention a few negatives, but I must mention them because they are there. So first of all, this monitor does use glossy plastic around the bezel as well as the stand. Now that bothers me for a couple reasons. First of all, because of fingerprints that can gather if you touch the frame too much, and also dust that's just going to naturally accumulate on the base. Now I honestly don't know what you could do about that because almost every monitor I've ever seen actually uses glossy plastic on the stand, but if that's going to bother you, you'd have to find some sort of workaround for that. So next up is one of the biggest problems I actually had with this monitor, and it is actually bugging me quite a bit. The plastic bezel on the bottom here is starting to warp out and kind of fold down. It's not too extreme, but you definitely can see it if you look at it from a certain angle. 
And I believe that this is because the panel's probably getting warm and just causing the plastic to deform a little bit. Now, I probably could send this in to be fixed, but I just wouldn't want to deal with it because you'd have to send it all the way to Korea. So I guess we'll just have to learn to deal with that and just be aware that that might happen to yours if you buy one. And keep in mind that it doesn't affect the function at all, and you honestly can't see it very much, but it is still there. And also keep in mind that the built-in speakers for this monitor are going to sound like garbage. Now honestly, any speaker built into a monitor is probably going to sound like garbage, so if you plan to do any music listening or movie watching, then you're probably going to want to have some sort of headphones or external speakers. And then last on my list of negatives here is that this monitor only has one input. Now that's actually not a negative for me, but I just wanted to make sure that I mentioned that for anybody who plans to buy this monitor. Just make sure you know that this only has a dual link DVI input and you must plug in a dual link DVI cable to a dual link supported graphics card. If you don't have everything in that chain, this monitor just will not work. Now I'm pretty sure there's some models of the Korean monitors that do come with HDMI and VGA inputs, but those will cost a little bit more, and just keep that in mind when you're ordering this if you need that feature. And now with all that out of the way, I just wanted to talk about some notes that I made about this monitor. So first of all, the power brick that comes with the monitor does actually get very warm. Now I doubt it's any sort of a fire hazard or a safety issue, but it does get warm and it is a little bit concerning if you like bump your foot against it and you notice that it's warm. Now when I've noticed this is after the monitor has been running for a while, say like 6 to 8 hours or more, but once it hits its high temperature it doesn't really seem to go any higher than that, so you shouldn't ever have a problem with it, but you might want to keep your eye on it just in case. Also, the stand that comes with this monitor is incredibly shaky, and the reason that I didn't list that as a negative is because it doesn't seem to matter to me. Like, I don't push on my desk very much, so it doesn't shake anyways, and I can't really see why it's that much of a problem for people that the stand is a little bit shaky. Honestly, any cheaper monitor is probably going to have somewhat of a shaky stand. I mean, this Asus one here does for sure, and so does the X-Star, obviously. So it's just really not a problem for me. But keep that in mind if that is going to bug you for some reason, that you might either not want to get this monitor or you might want to have some sort of vase mount solution available. And last but definitely not least is the whole situation involving the eBay seller that I bought this from. So I posted my feedback on their page, and within a couple days, they actually messaged me and offered me a partial refund on the monitor if I would change my review. Now, the reason that they gave for this is that they said they view quality over this shipping speed, which I said was a fair point, so I agreed that I would go through and change the review, and plus recoup a little bit of the money to compensate me for the, um, the waiting time, as well as just some of the issues that I had with the monitor. So once I had done that, apparently there was some sort of problem with the eBay system, and the review didn't fully go through which didn't seem too true to me, but it definitely might be. I'm not calling them a liar or anything, but it seemed to me like I did everything right. So it seemed like the review went through, but yet they said that something went wrong and I never actually got the 10% refund that they offered me for this. So that was definitely frustrating. Now, once again, I'm not saying that they lied. The system might actually have messed up and the feedback might not have went through, but I'm not sure if there's a way to check that or not. And I was just done dealing with this by that point. So I figured I would just be happy with the monitor for what I paid for it and just let it go. But anyways, guys, that's been the good, the bad, and everything in between about this monitor. So now hopefully you have enough information to make the decision on your own whether or not this would be the right kind of a monitor for you. But anyways, guys, that's about it for this review. So if you enjoyed it, please do click the like button as that does help me out. Also, leave me a comment about anything that I did well at or anything that I could improve. And if you'd like to see more of my videos, then please do click subscribe. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you guys later.